enjoy it again. All right, so songing is, in the Chinese translation to English, it, it's relax. But it's not relax in the sense that we think of that we kind of turn flaccid. You know, where we just go and become a, a bowl of jello. That's not the context or the meaning of song. You have to have song when you do Tai Chi in order for the Chi to flow. Now, song is different than Pong. Okay, so right now we're doing song. So song is sort of an opening up of the joints in your body for a simple description. So that when you start to put your awareness in opening up the joints, then you... Um, it is a form of relaxing while maintaining structure. And it, it makes physiological changes in your body. So here's Tai Chi Tom, and he's had a rough day. He's already lost a foot. Oops, now he's lost a leg. <laughs> he's songing a little too much. <laughs> Song. He oversonged. So if I, if when I song, for me the easiest joint to visualize is the shoulder. Now his shoulders are articulated. In truth, our shoulders are not. They're loose. They're hanging like this, and we have tendons and ligaments and soft tissue that is keeping this here. And then we have all this marvelous range of motion under normal conditions. So you can song your shoulder joint. So you can open up. You can imagine that 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 space there in between your shoulder is getting wider and wider and wider. So for me, it's very helpful to know the joints and to visualize the joints. And then you can open up the space in the joints. So what we're going to do is we're gonna do a two minute, maybe a one and a half minute exercise in songing our hands and see what happens. So in your hand, you have your knuckles, I'll refer to them. Then you'll have the next set of knuckles or joints up towards the sky or towards the fingertips, so I'll refer to them. And then the final set of joints right here. Okay, so you will have, we'll have knuckles, and then knuckles one, two, and three. And then you can maybe even think about your wrist. These are long bones here, so these are really where your joints are in your hands. So that's what we're gonna focus on. All right, so what I would like for you to do first is you're gonna find Oh, this is nice to have this camera. You have these creases here. Notice I didn't call them wrinkles. So I want you to find the crease that's right at the base of the palm of your hand. And then the one on the other side as well. And you're gonna line those two up. And all that's doing is giving us a baseline measurement. So you line those two creases up. You know, find them and line them up and then make prayer hands. And then you'll notice that one of your middle fingers is slightly longer than the other. Could be just a millimeter, okay? So look at it and identify which hand is longer than the other. Got it? Now I want you to put the longer hand down and then keep your shorter hand up. Now, if you would like, you can Close your hand, eyes while we do this, but I'm going to get, take you through a little visualization. And it'll take about a minute, so just make sure you're nice and comfortable. So the first thing I want you to do is just see the bones of your hands in your mind's eye. And I want you to see that your knuckles, that first row, that those bones are touching each other. And now I want you to visualize that you're creating space in other words, that's songing the joints in each one of those knuckles. So that at first you just see a little bit of space between each knuckle. And then you visualize two millimeters of space and three millimeters. Now keep in mind, you're not doing any effort with your hand. You're just visualizing this in your mind's eye. But you're creating space in your knuckles, that first row. Really see it. And now we're going to move up to the second row of knuckles, up towards the sky. And you can see that those are touching. And now I want you to visualize and create space between each one of those knuckles. So you see a millimeter of daylight in between each of those joints. And now two millimeters the space continues to open and you have three millimeters. 
And now let's go up to the fingertips, up to the knuckles up there, or the joints, and start creating space in between those, each one, so that you start to feel that you have a millimeter gap in between each one of those knuckles. And then two millimeters, three millimeters. And now you feel like the whole structure of your hand is beginning to elongate up towards the sky. So at first, your fingers are lengthening up towards your ceiling. And you can feel the texture of the ceiling with your fingers. And now your fingers are growing so long that they just melt away the ceiling and they're lengthening up into your roof. You can feel the heat of the attic. And now above your roof line and into the damp air. And your fingers are still lengthening up towards the sky, growing longer and longer. Now your fingers go beyond the cloud line into the blue sky. And the air is cool and crisp and you can feel it on your hand. Your fingers continue to grow longer and longer, lengthening up. And the light falls away as you leave our atmosphere. And now you're into space, the darkness and the vacuum. And your hands brush past, your fingers brush past the moon. You can feel the texture of the moon on your fingers. And now you go beyond our own galaxy and further and further, your fingers lengthening and expanding into infinity. All right, now you can open your eyes, and I want you to line up those two creases. I've never done this through Zoom. We'll see. Oh, yeah. And look at your hands. <laughs> How about that? So your other hand that was shorter is either equal to or now longer than and exceeding what was your longer hand. So it's pretty amazing. When I do this, I teach a physical therapy continuing ed course. And when I do this, it just blows them their minds because we're such a hands-on, you know, our therapy, we have to put hands on. But look what you did. You created just by creating an awareness in your mind, a physiological change in your body. Your hand has changed. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? And I, I invite you like maybe 15 minutes from now or 15 minutes after Tai Chi class to take a look and see where it is and how long that holds. I always joke to people, for those of you that know me in person, I'm, I'm five feet tall, so I'm pretty short. And I always joke to people that I was four foot six when I first started Tai Chi. <laughs> and I've songed all the way up to five feet. But I don't know, maybe some of you also felt a lot of warmth in your hand. My hand got very, very warm. So you notice that by songing, which was a mental exercise more than a physical exercise, that you got more chi flow through your body. Yeah, so the goal in this then is that we begin to song our joints while we do Tai Chi. And we do it, I, would, I tell you, I guide people to say, maybe it's 10% of effort of songing, but then it's 90% of a mental exercise. That you're feeling taller, that you're feeling longer, that your joints are opening, and then you do your Tai Chi in that mindset, and you'll have the same kind of Chi flow that you had in your hand. And it, will, and it makes physiological changes. Right then, our, our, our hand lengthened. I mean, that's, that's remarkable. That means we had a f changes in the fascia, in the tendons, in the ligaments, and in its resting state. And this is a synopsis, a short little viewpoint of what we're doing to our body when we do Tai Chi and we song our joints and open our joints. <laughs>